Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woki, and I'm back with some Dragalia Lost. Today, let's go over the This Month in Dragalia Lost. Uh, the thing they do basically every month. I'm gonna go over it, talk about it, give some thoughts about it. This one ends up being... There's a lot of, like, cool upcoming stuff, and then some stuff that I've... Or let's just say one of the things later on actually caused a pretty big conversation in the Trash Alliance um, Discord about where the game is kind of... <laughs> What, what the game's currently doing and stuff like that. But yeah, that's what we're going to be talking about today. As always, if you end up liking this video, please leave a like. Comment about how you're currently feeling about this month in Dragalia. How how much are you looking forward to the uh, to this month? Sorry, my, my tongue is all weird. This is what happens when you record at the dead of night. Anyway, let's get into it. And tell me what you're looking forward to. That was the other thing. Hello there, Yuji Okada, the director of Dragalia Lost. Thank you for playing. We've reached 1.5 year anniversary. Talked a little bit about what's coming up. All right. Plans for this month. Are you enjoying the Scars of Syndicate raid event? Yeah, I would say so. The song that plays during the battle against the new raid boss, I'm not going to pronounce that, is Get Up by Mad Kid. Also plays when things get heated during the story, so I hope you give it a listen. Um, I don't know. In the actual fight, I don't think it's ever lasted more than 30 seconds. <laughs> Just because the fight is usually ended so quickly. Anyway, Aldrea and Bellina, these two adventurers can't can't shapeshift, but they can enter a special state called Dragon Drive instead. While in Dragon Drive, certain parameters and skills will be boosted. Also, unlike shapeshifting, you can you can end Dragon Drive whenever you like without using up the special gauge entirely. I think you'll enjoy how the gameplay feels a little different without shapeshifting. And yeah, I agree. These are two cool ass mechanics for sure. Um I actually kind of wish I had Belana, but that's neither here nor there. All right, Grace, the Shadow Attuned staff adventurer, will be added in the near future, so this is probably going to be part two. Grace is a unique adventurer in that she's a healer who lacks recovery skills, but she's extremely powerful when partnered with adventurers like Natalie, whose parameters are increased when their HP is lower. Um, interesting. So that means that there's not going to be any traditional healing. I saw some people saying like, oh, maybe she has shields, or maybe she just gives such a crazy like defense reduction or something, like defense reduction, um, defense uh, percentage up or something. Interesting. She also looks cool. Probably still gonna save though. Um, they're coming back. They're gonna bring back the Hunt for Harmony facility event in mid-April. We'll also revive the Fire Emblem Lost Heroes event starting April 19th. A summon showcase featuring Marf, Yorm, and Veronica will also be available at the same time as a revival, of course. Yeah, that's kind of to be expected. Um, a Chimera boss enemy of a new element and a new Chimera weapon will be added during the Fire Emblem's Lost Hero event. Re really? During? Huh. Okay. A brand new Fire Emblem Heroes event will start at the end of April. Makes sense. Fire Emblem Heroes event, as announced during the Dragalia Digest, will be reviving the Fire Emblem Lost Heroes event starting April 19th. Along with event revival, we'll also be unlocking the Mana Spirals for Alphonse, Marth, Huarm, and Veronica. The event has been changed slightly for the revival, so you'll have the chance to view the full story before the start of the new event. The defensive battles have also been adjusted to be playable in solo play. What's more- really? Hmm. What's more, the new Fire Emblem Heroes event will feature new adventurers, story, and gameplay elements. You can also add Sharina, a new adventurer, to your roster by playing this event. It's scheduled to start at the end of April, so keep an eye out for it. So there you go. That's the free-to-play character for um, the second event. I was kind of hoping for Anne, Anna, uh, but I'll take Sharina. I like Sharina. She's cool. Chain co-op abilities. We added a new feature called Chain Co-op Abilities in a recent update. The reason we introduced this feature is because we wanted to increase the amount of strategy that goes into your team building. The number of adventures you can, that can be obtained by playing through the main campaign events and summon showcases has grown since the release of the game. And we want to make it more worthwhile to upgrade and use all your those adventures. You should give us more toilet paper then. Because I'm not awakening everyone until I get some more of the, the Champion Testament. So how about you get working on that first, dude? Anyway, chain co-op abilities are upgraded along with co-op abilities, so while upgrading adventurers may be difficult, these parameters boost adventurers party, uh, plenty, even at level 1. I hope you'll try lots of different co combinations, because of the introduction of chain co-op abilities, we'll also like to increase the number of teams you can build in a future update, so please uh, wait a little longer. Which is good for me, because I've already, I'm running out of team space, 
there's so many different teams I need for so many different like I need this team but actually strong I need this team but for rupee grinding and stuff like that a new new feature update a new feature for skills we're planning on adding a new feature that allows adventurers to use skills of other adventurers as long as that adventurer meets certain conditions this will make it possible to find skills in brand new ways, so we expect that it will create a, quite a bit of variations in quest strategy and how adventures are used. We'll be sure to share some information about this feature in a future update um, notification. <sighs> events. We're also preparing a new event in addition to raid events and facility events. In the first event format, you'll have to take on a large amount of enemies. The other format will center on defensive battles like in Fire Emblem Lost Heroes event. In this event, you'll be able to play battles with vast maps, reinforcements, and ever-changing battle situations. We'll hold one of the two event types each month, and each will have a new story. Hmm. Okay. Look forward to seeing more of that later. Agito Uprising. Uh, we're planning to... Agito. I like... Either way, it doesn't matter. We're planning to add a new boss to the Agito Uprising at the end of April. One of the two bosses shown during the Dragalia Daisha is to make their debut. Hello, and hello. Crafting. They plan on improving crafting because it sucks right now. Not the actual ability, the menus of it. Because if you ever tried to craft anything, it's really confusing for no good reason at all. So they're gonna get rid of that. Here's the big one. Um, game difficulty. With the game having reached its 1.5 anniversary, I'd like to take a little bit uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the direction the game is going forward. Dragalia Lost is an action RPG. Players are required to combine the RPG elements of building up adventurers with the action elements of moving around during battle to overcome powerful foes. Right now, we feel that there's a significant gap between players in regards to the action elements of the game. We want to make it so that the wide variety of players can play the game, from those who like upgrading adventures and straightforward gameplay, but are not as interested in the action to those who prefer the actions of working out ways to take on boss enemies of the two. Of the two, we are currently prioritizing adding and adjusting content to help players who are not as interested in action enjoy too. In action, enjoy the game. Interested in action, enjoy the game. I think the barrier to entry for Jigalia Loss is a little high for a smartphone game. And that's, makes, that's making matching during co-op difficult and causing some players to quit playing the game entirely. With the addition of uh, chain co-op abilities and the new skill feature, it will be possible to upgrade teams further than ever before. Make it possible for players who are less interested in the action elements of the game to potentially clear high difficulty quests. This is the reason why we've kept the difficult difficulty of the Agito Uprising down in terms of action elements for standard and expert difficulties. In the this month of Dragalia Lost notification that was released back in March of this year, I said the Agito Uprising is an easier tackle than Advanced Dragon Trials because I think that clearing the Agito Uprising on standard difficulty and crafting a six weapon before challenging Advanced Dragon Trials is one possible option, but it seems my lack of explanation generated some confusion, so I apologize for that and regard the Agito Uprising we're planning to add difficulty levels in the future. When we do, we will make it possible to craft tier 6 weapons. Additionally, in the future, we are hoping to add quests that are a little more difficult than those who are seeking a challenge, though you won't be able to collect any rewards or materials for increasing your might from them. I apologize to users who are waiting for quests of a more challenging difficulty level who felt that these quests were lacking. Hope you're looking forward to these future quests and additions to Agito Uprising. Due to the development and circumstances, there are a lot of problems we cannot resolve immediately, but we will continue to make improvements to the game and better to live up your expectations. In conclusion, the 1.5 year since the release of the game, and there's a lot we want to work on to start moving forward, the second anniversary. We're working on a few other things besides the updates I mentioned. It'll be, I'll be sure to share more info about the notifications at a future edition of this month in Dragalia. Also, here's 100 Fafnir medals and a fortified crystals then that ends the this edition of of this month in dragalia until may 1st okay so here's the big one it's the game game difficulty part um i think it's fair to say that dragalia loss is not um for someone coming in that's always it's always been the problem with dragalia loss and it's something that I've also had to struggle when I've tried to get people into the game. And I'm sure a lot of the newer people who are listening to this and made it this far know as to trying to beat standard uh, HMS. Um, 
when you don't know what's going on, it's super hard to actually move forward in anything because they don't do a very good job of like, like telling you specifically, like the, the only reason I know how to be HMS, for example, and the only reason I know how to beat any of the high difficulty things in this game um, is that I have to be like, I have to talk to other people and kind of figure out what's going on. But if someone's just jumping into the game and trying to play it and trying to learn it, it's super frustrating that they actually can't be able to beat anything. Like, not beat anything, but specifically like all the stuff that's made for end game content. There was actually a recent survey that was done by Dragalia Lost that said, so how many people actually do the high dragon trials? And it turned out only 20% of the people who answered the survey actually do a high dragon trial. Um, that's stupid low. That is insanely low when you figure out like, that would mean like 80% of people just aren't playing high dragon trials at all because they don't like it because it's not fun. And I'll give them this much. I think it's actually something that's been a, I, this is something I think they should do overall is just completely rework the fights because some of them are just like not fun. Like the problem for me isn't that they're difficult because I've been able to beat them with, you know, eventual time over time. The problem is, is that they're not fun. You play them a whole bunch and you're not really having any fun with it until you beat it and you have that moment of like, yes, I'm all done, everything's finished. But then that that moment kind of leaves you, especially now that with Agito um, battles, it's very easy to have like, like for example, um, what's a good example right now? Um, there's absolutely no reason to beat Master High Zordiac, Zordiac right now because the Kai for Agito gives you a better weapon it's easier to do. So the only reason you would ever want to do Master or Extreme or any of the other standard abilities is for the title and that's it. Um, so you basically avoid an entire fight. Like I've never done them at all. And my shadow team is as strong as ever. So I've just completely skipped over them 100% because I had no real interest in doing them just because I didn't want to be bothered to actually learn it until like later. Like that's the main thing is that I think that's going to be a, it's going to be a problem that's never actually going to be solved. Um, because no matter what, there's going to be people, new people that join in and we can make the game as easy as we can for them. And I think it's honestly, um, if people are quitting the game because of high dragon trials and stuff like that, then we need to actually improve high dragon trials because if we want to actually have a game to survive and be able to like live long. We can't literally get rid of all the new people. And the thing he talks about here, specifically about co-op rooms, is 100% true. Because you'll have entire co-op rooms where people just don't want to play. I do it too, to be honest. When I, But I never make a room and then tell people to leave. I just leave the room. Um, because either I feel like I'm not needed or I'm playing a role that everyone else is already there and I, I don't feel like playing. So that's the basic. So I leave so to give them a better chance of winning with someone else. But there are entire, like, people who, like, if you try and play a character, for example, even if you're the best player in the game, let's say you were, like, the number one player in Dragalia Lost and you wanted to play Mega Man and you went to go do a co-op, no one would actually play with you because nobody would believe in you because you're using Mega Man. And everyone knows, for the most part, um, they don't know how good you are, but they know Mega Man is terrible, so they don't want to do the fight with you. So you end up in the situation where just no one wants to fight you at all. No one wants to play with you at all. So if that's the kind of good thing you have to make around your video game, then it's kind of like, I don't know. Doesn't sound very good. I will say it does suck for people who, at least for now, because the thing that you're saying is all stuff in the future. So, but you know, for more difficult f uh, content in the future, that doesn't help you for the now, especially with <laughs> the fact that we're doing a shadow event and the entire event is extremely easy. Um, you could always do the thing that I would, you could always just use other units, but that doesn't really help anything either. You also want to be able to use the units you've built up and put time into. So just the idea of just like not using them, um, and then it's kind of like, that's not a solution to any real issue at all. You're just kind of putting a bandaid over it if you're using low level characters then. But yeah, it's a very difficult thing to think about. I'm not like trying, I mean, I definitely am in a way of like, yeah, the people who specifically love Dragalia and they only like Dragalia because it has extremely hard raid events, they're not being currently catered to. And 
that's unfortunate. But if they have literal data, like here's the thing: if you actually 100% legitimately love all the hard content, what you need to do is very respectfully tell the team, "I would like some more, please." Give me more of this specific one. If you want to make, and even if this specific thing it doesn't work out for you, then you have to help tell them what, exactly what you want because they don't know what you want if they don't if you don't answer them. Basically, like if you see a survey, like if you're one of the, if you're one of the people who are like didn't answer the survey, and you're like I love the hard content, but you didn't feel like filling out the survey, then your voice is going unheard. Like that's the thing. It's like the only people who are currently making their voices known are the people who actually. Have a legit beef with all the hard content in the game, so they're the ones who are kind of getting the the stuff catered to at the moment. So you need to be able to fight back. And I'm not saying like, oh, go storm down the the devs' office and demand this. No, the devs listen to you, and they listen like intently. They wouldn't do the this month in Dragalia if they didn't like actually care about you. So, and if and if push comes to shove, and it turns out like the game's not going in the right direction for you, then um, you just gotta cut off you know, the game you love, I guess. It's very unfortunate. It's also coming from, I'm the worst person to give that advice because I still play Dokkan Battle, so I actually have no idea. It can be very tough to cut away from something, especially if you love it. Um, but in general, I think Dragalia is making the right moves to keep itself continuously going. Because here's the one thing, I want Dragalia to continuously thrive. And I would love it to be their future where there's extremely hard content for the people who want it. And there's also, in general, just pure fun content for everyone else. That's the base. That's like the dream idea, of, right? It's something that no game actually gets perfect. Because it's actually impossible to make the perfect balance. Um, at least I think so. I, don't, I can't really think of a... <laughs> let alone a video game. Let alone, let alone a gotcha game. Um, that has actually struck that perfect chord. So, yeah, that's my current thoughts on it. Um, sorry if it was a little rambly. If you want to tell me how you feel, you're more than welcome to leave a comment. I'm willing to listen and see what's up with it. Um, but yeah, I think it makes sense for them to move the direction they're going. I also feel like if they started saying, because I'm, again, I'm one of those people who are like, yeah, sure. I really don't like High Dragon Trial, and Nagito is the perfect level of actual difficulty, because I don't want to be like, I don't want to be insane with a game. The last game I was insane with was Ore Collection, and look how badly that went out. Ore Collection was a game that only catered to hardcore people, and actively did not care about bringing in new people, and that game got shut down and was replaced with something that is more user friendly. Um, if they had actually like figured out a way to get new people on with the current system they had uh that would have been a better future for them potentially down the line but that's not what happened what happened is that that game is in essence dead and no longer here so it's tough the decisions man no one says they're 100 percent right all the time and that's why i'm saying if you have specific beef with this type of um statement that you should send in your feedback because this is how they got this feedback because there's plenty of people out there who just straight up don't want to play dragalia because it's too hard it's especially the raid stuff is like insane to think about like it's it's literally like mmos where you have to remember a boss fight and that's arguably more time that you should spend on a gacha game or a mobile game in general like, why would anyone want to spend that much time figuring it out when they could just, like, go somewhere else? But at the same time, there's people who like Dragalia for that specific reason. Like I said, it's not, like, a clear-cut, like, one side is clearly right and one side is clearly wrong. The answer is, is that there has to be a balance. And they're working toward a balance. They currently feel like the game is too heavy on one side. So they're trying to make it easier and more fun for everyone to play. But that also means that currently the harder content stuff is kind of getting a little on the wayside but you know that's enough of that that's enough of me like rambling on because <laughs> i've talked more than i expected to but yeah that's the end of today's video i hope you liked it um again if you want to leave your thoughts leave your thoughts tell me what you're currently thinking about this i'll tell you right now based off all the stuff the difficulty thing is definitely the more thing because it's the, the one thing that's like oh we have to all talk about negatively but let me tell you this is some great art fantastic woman coming through Fantastic. Fantastic. But yeah, that's the end of today's video, everyone. Have a good day. I hope you have a good day. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh, that was a perfectly on your chest.